right, Andre is going to talk to us about LTE test beds. Well, yeah, kind of. Okay, so. <laughs> yeah, no, yeah, yeah it's, it's right. Thanks, Phil. Uh, so I'm Andre, I'm with uh, Software Radio Systems, and we do SRS LTE. Uh, who of you guys knows about SRS LTE or has heard about it? Who has actually used it? That's not too bad. Um, cool, so hopefully we'll learn a little bit more about this today. Um, so we are a small, relatively small company, um, headquartered in, in Cork Island, uh, with offices in Dublin as well. Uh, but most of our development takes place in Barcelona, Spain. Uh, and we are nine people and we are growing. Um, SR is fast in history, so it's been long actually since we've, we um, yeah, started business really. Uh, um, so the first talk at Fostem about our yeah, software has been given by Ismail back then, LibLT as an open source uh, file library for yeah, doing signal analysis or LTE signal analysis. Um, then 2015, there has been a talk uh, given by Paul about uh, an overview talk about available uh, LTE, SDR uh, software platforms. And there has been another talk, um, th yeah, three years ago, by Ismail uh, already looking at SRS UE, so the first uh, UE implementation um, utilizing the, the base file library. And now 2017 and 2018, what have we done? Did we do anything at all, or did we just relax on the beach in Barcelona? No, we, we worked, uh, and uh, 2019, uh, we're here again. So the SRS LTE ecosystem, as you might know, uh, so SRS LTE is, um, first of all, a library, a file library, uh, which we use for uh, a variety of applications, and it basically implements the, the file as well as, and that's why it's a, a uh, core LTE library, really, uh, as well as common blocks that we share in, in upper layers as well. Uh, so from Phi, Mac, RC, PDCP, RC, uh, you all have helper functions uh, that are shared among. But then on top of the, of the core library, such as SRSU, as I said, uh, SRSD node B, which is uh, fully functional uh, LTE node B, and our most recent offspring, SRS EPC, which is a, a lightweight core network implementation. And there's a bunch of other commercial products that also uh, build upon SRS LTE uh, or the core library. So as a company, we're doing uh, public projects as well as commercial projects. Um, why I'm bringing this project here specifically is because um, this has guided our development roadmap uh, for the past two years, actually. Uh, that's a project called Open First, uh, funded by NIST in the US. Uh, and they funded us, or still fund us, to build a fully end-to-end -end open source LTE um, network testbed with, with specific focus on public safety. So that's because they're most interested in. So we um, open sourced. Um, functions are of particular interest to the um, public safety community, uh, such as uh, MBMS and uh, D2D and other things. Um, and we will have a look at this uh, in a minute. So this slide should just give you a little bit of an overview about the releases of our software. Um, so the, the left-hand side of the slide is basically the old version and scheme, which we started with uh, just, yeah, normal point one and uh, so major minor uh, releases um, until version two, uh, which is, uh, well, only one and a half years old. Uh, and we then uh, switched to uh, uh, like that year month scheme that you probably know from Ubuntu, for instance. And with that, um, we also introduced, so we, in general, we're trying to release um, our software uh, quarterly, so 
get, a, get out a new release every three months. And we are following kind of a TikTok model there where um, we, in one release, we're trying to bring new features into the, into the software. And in the second, we're starting in a, in a smaller feature change list. Uh, first of all, trying to stabilize the software, uh, but also to um, um, take the opportunity to refactor lots of stuff. So that, that's something that you usually don't, don't see and don't, people don't really appreciate, but we have to do that. Uh, constantly in order to be able to uh, yeah get all the features into into the software and, and, and to extend it uh, at, at, the, at the speed that we are that, that we are doing that right now um, and yeah besides the 1712 release I think we were like almost a month uh, behind so that was released in uh, January or start of February uh, 2018. I think the, the, the reasons were all kind of a, in a week, in a week window <laughs> after the, after the, the, the version, uh, or what the, what the version number suggests. Uh, yeah, and just rec recently we released uh, 1812. So that's uh, our, yeah, brand new release there uh, uh, in January. So I, I've collected, um, well, what I call the important SRSLT releases because um, they include uh, quite some interesting features, uh, just to give you an overview. So in SRSLT 2.0, we uh, added or we um, made the SRSE not be public. Um, and a big change for those of you who knew the project from before, uh, we merged SRSUE, which used to be a, a single repo, into the SRS ATE code. So now, uh, from that point onwards, there was no longer there was no longer the need for having a specific SRS ATE library, which back then only included the the the, the FI and the common code, and to have the matching UE uh, or vice versa. So that went all into on a single rep repository, uh, like the enodeb um, as well. Then in 17. Oh, now we added uh, MIMO support for the file layer and also the, the UE. Uh, so that gives us uh, transitional three and four uh, for those of you who know that. So you can actually do with a 20 megahertz LTE cell, you can do 150 megabits downlink uh, in software running on your, yeah, mid-range computer, I'd say. Um, then we added EMBMS, that's a broad broadcast um, services for LTE, so you could have um, a base station transmitting, uh, for instance, a video stream uh, and multiple UEs receiving that, rather than each UE receiving the individual stream. Um, I don't know if that is used in the public at all, but uh, it's an LTE feature uh, that was brought into release uh, 10. Then with release 1712, we added MIMO to the eNode B, so uh, you can also like previously, you could receive a from an, from another e -Node B um, the downlink signal. Now you can also generate it with with, with SRS e -Node B um, and serve uh, commercial UEs with that. Uh, we added our first uh, release of SRS EPC, and from that moment on, you could really build an entire LTE end to end from handset, base station, core network, uh, just using um, open source software. Uh, we also added handover and user plane encryption to, to, U, to the UE, so you can roam between cells. Um, and then in 1806, um, after, if you remember, uh, after adding EBMS in the FI, we extended, um, in the UE, we extended it to the eNodeB and also the EPC. So all those changes uh, require, um, <coughs> like the EBMS, for instance, require quite an amount of, of work in the, in the core network. Uh, not only the, the radio access network, so, and those features generally just uh, go to the UE first, the first fight in the UE, and then the core network as well. We had something uh, that we call hard SIM support, where you can um, uh, use a commercial SIM card reader, plug your uh, SIM card in, and then uh, connect to to a commercial, uh, you know, being do the authentication uh, with, a, with a real SIM card as well. And then, last but not least, uh, so our uh, latest version, 18.12, uh, in which we introduced the biggest change uh, 
so far in terms of uh, number of, of code being added and, and removed from the code base is a new ASN1 library um, for packing, uh, packing RC messages. So that's, that's a big dilemma in all the open source uh, yeah, uh, radio projects. Uh, so there's, uh, you need to, in order to, to uh, pack and unpack these messages, you need to understand ASN1. And um, we've previously relied on code from um, OpenLT, and, um, but the limitation there was simply that this um, is uh, stuck to, yeah, the development got stuck at release eight, and we partially added higher releases, uh, but it's very cumbersome to write that code manually, uh, especially when you go upwards. And so a release 15 RC, that's, you yeah, know, thousands of messages, and you don't really want to write that manually. Uh, so we uh, developed a, a code generator for this, and, and we're now future proof of that. So we can actually generate our own uh, packing and packing code there. As well, we added encryption to SRC PC and IPv6 support for, for, for the UE as well. So what's, what's our roadmap for 2019? Um, so as I said, so there will be four leases uh, this year as well. Um, I'm a little bit, you know, uh, I don't want to make too high promises, but definitely what's going into the release is closed loop power control in the UE. Um, then depending on how the refactoring of our file goes, uh, like TDD support, so that's the, the mode for those of you um, who don't know, like in China, for instance, or also in the US, uh, the carriers usually use TDD, and in Europe it's, it's FTD. So uh, where uplink and downlink is on different frequencies uh, in FTD, uh, in TDD it's on the same frequency. And that's, for instance, a good example. But we really required um, uh, an overhaul of the file li library, um, and that's, that's currently going, that's currently on a, on a merge. Uh, then we add carrier aggregation to the UE, so we'll be able to run up to five carriers um, with, with one UE. And there will be user and developer documentation, a long-awaited uh, thing. Um, so later in 2019, I expect uh, carrier aggregation in the E-Node B, uh, and also cycling for the Phi, uh, and uh, probably, as I said, it's going to be integrated in the UE first. Uh, but it's yeah, yeah, we, we cannot commit on any on, on, on a particular release uh, for those features. I'd say. Binary pa packaging, so that's something that uh, Marco said, so uh, you're still not able to install uh, GNU Radio, uh, and that's something that we also uh, had problems with, so every now and then people came and, and said that it's too cumbersome to install all the binary, or uh, to, to install the dependencies and build, uh, build the software. And that's true. And that's uh, what we, um, edit in 1806 uh, Ubuntu packaging, uh, so we maintain a PPA uh, ourselves, um, and since then we, yeah, we, we, we basically push releases uh, there, no snapshots. But with that, you can uh, install it pretty quickly. And then, then we've learned that there's also other people maintaining packages uh, for SUSE or OpenSUSE. I don't know what's the difference in the packaging uh, there. Uh, those are maintained by Martin Hauke, um, and there is Debian packages, which are maintained by by Ruben, uh, and they are going into uh, yeah Debian sit so unstable, uh, and they are available. Um, and both have actually no the Debians are not updated to 18.12, but uh, the SUSE packages are already at 18.12, and perhaps there are also other um, distributions that that have packages that we don't know. But yeah. Supported live hardware, so we have support uh, for Atlas Research Equipment, uh, so it basically the B200 <laughs> series, the X series. Um, uh, we still get support questions for the N210. We don't have a resampler, so we don't support the N210. Uh, we support natively the, the Blade RF, um, the old and the new one, and um, Epic Solutions uh, hardware. And through SOPI, those that we have tested, is the RTL SDR for receiving, LIME, and also uh, LibIO, so on um, 
so analog devices on uh, embedded uh, um, hard plat platforms. And soon we will also have a uh, radio driver that is actually not a hardware driver, but something called uh, that we call no RF driver. So it's a Serum Q based uh, radio driver. So what's this all about? So first of all, um, most of our testing and development obviously runs with, uh, with RF hardware. Um, but there's advantages to not using hardware uh, during development, also de debugging and continuous integration. Um, so something that we really want to do is to have to run the full software, uh, but turn off the, the hardware. Run it with Phi, uh, but not do any hardware. And have those ideal, like as Derek said, those ideal uh, signals there, really. Um, <coughs> For instance, to be able to use tools like wall grind or etro sanitizer or, or GDB to really debug things uh, without needing to, um, you know, to, to, to get samples to the user or receive them. Uh, to run the code faster, um, so to simulate, I don't know, an hour of network traffic uh, in, in half an hour, to run it slower and also to pause code. Uh, as well as to model uh, radio uh, channels, for instance, so have a set of e not Bs, a set of UEs, and have a channel matrix between all those e not Bs and, and, and UEs, and also to, to plot signals and visualize them. Um, but there are with that. So first of all, there's no e not B or UE changes uh, allowed, um, unless they're, they make sense, obviously. But just for the purpose of putting that, we, we didn't want to introduce new, new changes there. And we only wanted to have the radio module as a, um, like, like really as if it is a, a real radio, but just working, um, working uh, over IP, for instance, or, or local transport. The problem here is that the way we typically use the RF hardware and the way we interface with, with the user apps through, through UHD is uh, a little bit weird because we're not always transmitting, we're not always receiving. Um, we are, for instance, in the UE, we are receiving, so subframes is basically the time unit in, in LTE, so we are receiving not always one subframe and transmitting one, but the UE, for instance, receives five subframes and then another five, and then eventually transmits um, six subframes later, a random access, for instance. So there's no continuous um, RXTX um, and no yeah, synchronous uh, flow of IQ samples to and from the, from the radio. Uh, and there's rate changes as well. So cell search, for instance, you do at a very low uh, bandwidth, and then you increase your, your rate if you find the cell to be 10 megahertz wide or 20 megahertz wide. So that's something we need to, needed to cope with. Um, and there's something um, that we, so there's still a few discussions going on as to where we put uh, those functions, but in general, I think the idea is to um, uh, have a have this no RF radio module uh, use serial MQ for transporting IQ samples and use a request reply kind of model uh, have a plot blocking receive and use different have the possibility to use the different transports uh, put a way of handling the timestamps uh, that the UE generates and that the, that the, um, that the driver needs to understand and need to interpret uh, into this, this driver. And then we obviously need to have some buffering and padding of IQ samples because of the way I just said, um, like a receiver expects input, but the UE does not always generate output. So we need to find a way how to, to deal with that there and, and the resampling issue. And I think it's going to look like, like that. So there will be uh, any UE, uh, any node Bs and, uh, well, M, so it doesn't need to be the same actually number of UEs in not Bs and kind of a broker that um, that manages um, the interaction and shows to this side um, like as if the UE or the E-Note B would uh, actually be a synchronous uh, RF device receiving and transmitting always um, at the same, with, with the same rate. Um, so, and, and we, we, we stitch together a quick prototype, so it's actually uh, quite useful to, to show that, um, that, it, that, it, that it works. 
uh, using SRC node B as, uh, as a transmitter there, using your F7Q radio as a transmitter, uh, and using PSCHQE, which is our lightweight um, signal, downlink signal, sniffer, you could say, um, and um, using actually GNU radio as a broker, because with that approach, uh, you can um, straight away use the CRMQ uh, request reply blocks in GNU radio. from the E-Node B, adding them up, putting them through a failing model. There's a throttle block uh, and a geophosphor plotter. And the same signal um, is also sent to the UE. Um, so you actually have the channel model on the radio. And that's uh, how this looks like. Um, so you have a slider there where you can in introduce some noise there. and. Uh, make the signal slower or, or faster, so you can really observe every millisecond how the downlink is generated, how the noise is added, and how the UE sees, uh, sees that all piped through through GNU radio. And that's pretty cool, I think. OK, so yeah, a few of you might wonder what's the three clicks thing there in the title of the talk. So when I put that title there, I thought that, OK, we have a PPA, <laughs> so I, could, I should be able to Doing a live demo there at FOSDEM in the software manager, type SRSLT, click it, and because it's installed as a service, it should actually be like three or four clicks. You should have the e be there. But it's not, not going to work. I, d I found out later. So PPA packages are not in the software center. And I don't know a way to install something that is in the PPA uh, with just clicking, clicking mouse buttons. But uh, I guess you appreciate that way. Uh, as well. So it's uh, adding the PPA SSLTE releases, doing update, install SSLTE. Um, then there is a, a command here. So if you want to run the EPC and you want to have internet on your phone, for instance, or, or, or the, the, any other UE, you have to masquerade your um, device that uh, gets access or provides internet access to, to the machine you're running on. So you have to call that, that uh, script there and then run two commands on two different consoles and that should get us internet. And uh, we just give that a try here. I know there's people who hate live demos, but we just, we just give it a try. We just Usually this thing is just the guy doing the <laughs> Okay, so can you see the console? Yeah, so, so that's SRS E node B and it's not, not install, okay? So there's nothing. Um, and uh, I also get you this screen here. So that's, can you see that phone? So that's a, that's a commercial like Android phone um, that, we, that we used here. So install ENOT B, SRS EPC. So we install that there, okay? And then I do SRS EPC, so that's the core network, we need to launch that. I need sudo. And then there's sudo SRS E note B. Okay, so now I go to the phone. Can you see the phone? Yeah. I take that phone out of airplay mode, and I see the phone connecting, and I have this nice software radio systems LTE network there. No, I mean, it's, we're not transmitting uh, at high power, so it's all good. <laughs> <laughs> it will be okay. Yeah, don't get the... I don't know, yeah, yeah. What, what? Do you want to start getting ready? Yeah, I, uh, okay, so you guys, you see that we, we don't do the phone thing because I forgot to... Uh, roam the well. Anyway, so there's our 4G network. Okay, guys. All right. <laughs> we can thank our That's it. <laughs> this next talk, I'm worried about us all. No, all good. Glad I made it on time. <laughs>